Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another talk. I was uh, wondering about when parents are at home and they're working with their children, so much is, is needed from a parent, right? Parents are trying their level best to support the learning of their children. And especially when children are really young, it appears that it's very easy to teach them or it appears that it, it's very easy for them to learn. Uh, but it's, it's, it's not entirely true because younger children need more systematic instruction, which means you got to chunk everything down. It means you got to break everything down into very meaningful, doable little bits for these children. What that means is that parents need to have a strong understanding of the content that they're going to teach and also psychology of the learner. That's why in BEARD, they teach you psychology of learning and psychology of the learner. Um, so in today's video, I wanted to share what parents can do when it comes to developing reading or early reading ability in their children. Uh, most parents have a dream, a desire, and a goal to see their children reading well, and uh, laying the right foundations in that is very critical. So the big five for developing reading is the phonological awareness, is you know phonological awareness, phonology. And the next step when you build on that is the knowledge of phonics. Does the child understand phonics? Moving on, we have reading fluency. How fluently does the child read? Does the child, you know, is there sub vocalization? Can he, does he have instant word recognition? Uh, these are all very important factors. Then comes vocabulary. You see, vocabulary is one of the single most determinants of intelligence. Um, as said by some leading researchers. So vocabulary is, does your child understand the word? Does the child understand the meaning of the word? Because words are just sounds. What they actually do is they're conveying meaning. The whole goal of reading is comprehension. And comprehension would come when you have a strong vocabulary. In fact, there is this million word gap research that was done in the US. That spoke about families who have lots of books at home and books at the level of children and families where parents were reading to their children. Those children on an average heard five times more words than families that did not read to their children. And that's because when you're just talking to your child every day, you use a very limited set of vocabulary. You use a very limited set of words in your lexical knowledge, right? But when you read a book, you're actually introducing so many new words and so many new ideas for the child. With technology, internet and YouTube and games and you know things like that, what's going to happen is your children are getting a very engaging experience with these video games and it's very interesting and when something is so interesting they may find reading or decoding uh, figuring out something they may find that hard and you know they may tend to go into something that's more easy and after that of course after you build vocabulary the goal of all reading is comprehension and understanding so let's dive a little deeper into what this actually means, right? So when you look at phonemic or phonological awareness, phonological awareness is essentially the child understand, is able to hear different, different sounds. So auditory discrimination, for example, can he hear a sound here? Can he hear a sound here? Can he, can he get the different frequencies of the sound. This is a different thing. That's why we say for young children, uh, music, rhymes, rhythm, eurythmics, these are all very essential things because this is all developing phonological awareness. There's also a reason why when we see a little baby, we go like, hey, hi, how, you know, your voice goes up your intonation changes, your enunciation changes, your pronoun, you know, everything, your stress syllable changes, uh, you start using stretchy sounds. The, you, it's almost natural for us to do that as adults because 
you know, unknowingly, what we are doing is we are building phonological awareness and developing that skill within the child. Once you have phonological awareness, we can then go and build phonemic awareness. And what phonemic awareness means is the child has the ability to manipulate sound manipulate sound which means he's able to hear a word he's able to hear a, a bunch of sounds and he's going to he's able to understand what's the initial sound and what is a latter sound what is the onset and what is a rhyme and he's able to then manipulate that sound that is very very essential uh, phonics after phonemic awareness comes phonics phonics is the relationship between sound and visual letters or the shape of the letters or the grapheme right or the you know the way you've written it that is phonics because when you write something it's a grapheme and it doesn't have a sound so you need to know what the sound is it's like learning to swim reading a book that's really not possible so it's very important that teachers and parents know phonics have heard phonics they they understand it they know how to correct it and they teach it correctly. I've seen so many schools that just teach the wrong sounds. Like they say uh, the N for N they say is N and you know, that's really wrong. So wrong teaching needs to be stopped for the first thing. Uh, then comes fluency. For fluency, essentially we are looking at speed and accuracy. How fast are you able to read and how accurately are you able to read? Do you read are you reading the correct thing? Uh, and for vocabulary, it's all about listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Having a strong vocabulary allows you to access more meaning from text that you read, and it also allows you to become a more influential speaker or an influential writer. And then comes text comprehension. You see, is it active and purposeful meaning making so when your child starts reading something and of course we're talking about children at slightly higher levels we're looking at does the child understand the intention of the writer or the motivation of the writer or does he understand where he's coming from or is he able to see the different point of view so so much of text comprehension comes into play so pa as parents you should start focusing on that as well so a lot of parents have asked me, you know, how are there any ways to develop phonological awareness? Are there ways to develop phonemic awareness? And there are tons of activities that you can do just, you know, every day with your children. So from phonemic awareness, your idea is to hear and manipulate sounds in the spoken word. So if you're talking to your child, you could say, uh, you know, can you get the up, right? And uh, your child is really, really young, so maybe two year, two and a half or three years old. Uh, let the child hear you break down these component, uh, you know, were, uh, sounds. And over a period of time, the child will be able to kind of slowly work it out that you're probably breaking this down. On the other way, you can go like, right? And when you say that, what you're doing is you're stretching that sound. So suddenly a child looks at you and says, what's wrong with you? But as you do it more and more, you're, you're able to develop phonemic awareness in a child. It's almost like stop motion animation. Then comes onset and rhyme. So what's an onset and rhyme? So it's understanding onset, onsets and rhymes. So you can produce a rhyming word. So let's say the word cat, uh, k, which is the initial consonant, is the onset and at is the rhyme onsets and rhymes so parents can you know really play with onsets and rhymes that really helps children uh, build you know phonemic and phon uh, phonological awareness then comes syllable awareness this is again something that you can look at counting blending segmenting words into syllables so you want to say would you like to um, eat your food today or would you know uh, were you able to sleep well? So, you, you know, look for words which it, it's possible for you to segment or it's possible for you to uh, break it down into syllables and talk about that. Like, you know, you, once you eat your food, you're going to digest your food. So you can go like, digest your food. Uh, can you pick up the phone? Huh? You, you look for words with, with larger, you know, slightly longer words and break them down into its constant uh, syllables that will help children understand 
syllable awareness yeah and then slowly build it up into rhyme and alliteration so recognizing rhyming words and word play with alliterations so so many nursery rhymes are about alliteration and and uh, you know uh, you do so many poems that the reason is because they're rhyming words and then comes word awareness understanding the number of words in a sentence when you talk to your children maybe you can call out and say you know look at the amount of words focus on the words that i'm saying i want you to come here and sit at the dining table so you know you can you, know, you can probably tell them there are so many words in that sentence the idea is for you to get your children to focus on the spoken language um, of course and also the meaning but let's get them to focus on the spoken language as well so i really hope that you like this little video I made for you and I hope and, and pray that you get all the support you get, uh, you need to ensure that your child has a wonderful learning experience. Until next time, thank you.